Andor series on Disney Plus has come out to a lot of mixed reviews. Some love it and some hate it, but whether or not you love or hate the show, one thing that I think shouldn't be overlooked is just how amazing the work is by Luke Hull and the rest of the Art Direction team, because they've managed to create some of the most believable and inspiring pieces of architecture that I've seen in a show to date, and I'm including shows outside of the Star Wars universe, really demonstrating to me just how influential a set design can be on the tone of a show, on how it can push the story forward or tell you something interesting extra about what's going on. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and if this is your first time here on my channel, I'm a nerdy YouTuber by night, but during the day I'm a professional architect working on projects around the world. It's a passion of mine, and that's why I do YouTube. I love talking about architecture and sharing what I've learned and teaching some concepts to those who might be interested. So in this episode of An Architect Reviews, I'm going to take you on a short tour of some of my favorite sets from the new Star Wars series Andor, where I'll show you some places I really happen to enjoy, highlighting what I see as influences like places they might have used, including real locations, as well as sharing my opinion on why I think these spaces are so successful. As always though, remember that design is subjective. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, which I encourage you guys to share down below as you watch. Finally, for those concerned about the story, don't worry, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers as best as possible. The story here isn't really as important as it's not the subject of my video, however, there are some spaces that do tell you something about the story, so I'll do my best not to make too many of those connections for you, but it is important to talk about. More on that later. If by the end you enjoyed the video and you think I deserve it though, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to show your support. It really means a lot. Just like one other thing that means a lot to me, the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN, who make videos like these, which are not typically what I do, possible. They now not only help hide your IP from prying eyes, but go a step further with their new threat protection service. It works against intrusive ads, malware, trackers, and malicious websites. I've personally already used them for years after getting fed up with dealing with free VPNs that just didn't work, so that I can access IP restricted websites while I work from abroad while protecting my personal information. I also use the app on my iPad to let me watch shows like Strange New Worlds, which is frustratingly not available here in Taiwan. So if you're looking for a reliable VPN service and you want to help support the channel, head on over to nordvpn.com slash morphologist to get a huge discount on a two-year plan, plus four additional months free. That's nordvpn.com slash morphologist. Oh, and if none of this really works for you, you can always get your money back with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Designers often rely on precedent studies of similar spaces and architecture in order to better understand design challenges and possible solutions. One mistake new designers often make though is that they think that they need to come up with something new, something completely original from scratch. But the truth is that nothing is really original. Everything we have is iterative in some way, it's based off of an earlier design or idea. You see, humans have been around for a really long time, and most of what you imagine has probably already been done or considered at some point. This is why many set designs can resemble real-world locations, having likely taken direct inspiration from some real-world work. For example, one that jumped out to me was a recent scene from Coruscant, where we got to see where Cyril lives. The outside is clearly a real-world location, and is actually the Brunswick Center in London. But what really had me more interested was one of the scenes from the interior which was clearly in a different location. It was actually what I saw as direct inspiration from the Nakagin Capsule Tower, a legendary piece of metabolist architecture by Kishu Kurokawa in Tokyo, finished in 1972. And if you're a longtime viewer and this project feels familiar to you, it's because I have talked about it before. It continues to be an inspiration for designers around the world, including in the series Andor. Some of these shots are almost perfectly the same with some minor alterations, as sadly the building was torn down as of last year. The impetus of his striking modular design though aligns really well with the context of Andor. Kurokawa's vision was an industrial answer to the housing demands of a post-war Japan 
birth rates were increasing and the inner city housing situation in Tokyo was really limited. The idea was to use Japan's industrial prowess to rapidly produce modular spaces that could be quickly assembled and expanded with the growth of the city over time, ideally reducing the wasteful practice of demolishing older, smaller buildings for larger ones. Unfortunately, the design was severely flawed on the detail level and ironically, like I said, it was demolished this year after much fighting to keep the thing protected. Bringing this back to the show though, it makes a lot of sense to use this type of design on Coruscant where they continue to expand the city layer upon layer over centuries. The entire planet, in fact, is a city in Ecumenopolis and might adopt then an industrial approach like Kurokawa's in constructing spaces rapidly. And so while it's tragic that the building is no longer there, it's great to see that its legacy continues to inspire. Quite a few levels up from the capsule room though is another apartment on Coruscant, belonging to a certain well-known senator, Mon Mothma. It's probably not too much of a spoiler though because she's actually in the trailers. The space couldn't be more different than the latter character's capsule house. Nothing about this apartment feels industrial, prefabricated, or cheap. But that does make sense given Mon Mothma's social and economic status as a senator on Coruscant. One of the things that really stuck out to me though about the space was the clear cultural connection that the designers were trying to make between Mon Mothma and her home planet of Shandrilla. It was overtly mentioned several times through the show about how much they value their culture. And so it makes a lot of sense in this context that they would design an apartment in the Shandrilan style. Looking at the style more closely though, I think it's pretty clear here that there was an Eastern influence, given the bonsai tree at the entrance and the shoji type screens or ping fung type screens from Chinese culture that you see near the dining area. They also utilized a very interesting architectural element, a rounded door, well it's semi-rounded, it's more of a polygon in shape, but it's clearly influenced by Yue Liang men or translated moon gates, which were often featured in wealthy homes in ancient China, the moon having significant cultural implications dating as far back as the Han Dynasty in 157 BC. However, it is definitely worth noting that the design is not strictly Eastern influenced, having some geometric and repeating patterns that are not typical of organic Eastern designs. So I see some art deco inspiration thrown in here with maybe a bit of a cross of 90s interior design inspiration, like that sconce on the wall. I mean, look at this sconce. It, it really does look similar. All in all, despite the mishmash, the influences come together here harmoniously, giving the sense of near familiar cultural heritage that is different enough to not become cultural appropriation. I love the consistency of fine detail that takes multiple viewings to really fully appreciate. There's such a wonderful depth to this space. It's deceptively complex while appearing unadorned and maybe even contemporary on the surface. It definitely feels like a place I personally would want to stay in. I might even use it as a future reference. <laughs> Luthen's shop is also on Coruscant and it's another place I want to talk about. It's also just as equally wonderfully detailed but in a completely different style. Here we see some clear influences, well I can't point to any specific project, that reminds me strongly of brutalist art museum designs of the 50s and 60s. There's a wonderful consistency of detailing through the walls and pedestals that tie things together with repeated vertical line patterns that create this kind of gradient revealing display cases and platforms. What really makes the space exceptional though I think is the geometric ceiling, an often overlooked aspect of design that serves to transform the space from what would have been maybe bunker-like with uh, light only coming from the front windows. The openings appear to allow a natural daylight, although from the outside it appears that it's actually on the bottom of a tall structure so we can be pretty sure here that the light is artificial. Still, this strategy is also used in contemporary museums and those that I referred to in the 50s and 60s to allow in more natural light to appreciate the art with. It feels appropriately designed as the design influences of art museums seem to subtly suggest the importance and expense of each piece displayed. Here then we can see how design of a space can enhance its purpose. It can make what seems a trivial trinket in some warehouse instead become a thing of incredible value, a priceless piece of art. 
And I love the materiality of concrete. It's such a wonderful, calm and neutral color palette to complement what's being displayed. It feels as good as any real showroom you'd find in the real world, which really gives you a sense that the designers here really care about making this world believable. But above all, probably one of the most influential pieces of architecture in all of Star Wars is that of the Empire, as seen in this show in the Imperial Security Bureau's headquarters. Pristine, polished floors, monochromatic color schemes, slanted mechanical walls that impose, all together create an ordered, antiseptic design that is emblematic of the Empire's ideal. It's a reflection of its desire to impose order on everything. The ISB meeting room is just fantastic in this regard. The uncomfortably bright artificial lighting feels perfect for this setting, coming from an appropriately round-spoked light that is reminiscent of the Imperial Crest featured on the display screen just on the back wall. In fact, the entire room seems to be based off the entire Imperial Crest motif, down to the floor panel layout. One interesting detail though in this space is the geometric wall pattern which is a bit of a break from what I've typically seen before in Imperial design. I strongly suspect that this space might actually be a real world location but I've been unable to locate where it's from. But whether or not it's a real world space, I believe that this pattern may serve two purposes. The first is for acoustic dampening. This geometric pattern is similar to those you might have seen in soundproof rooms. It's appropriate then I think for the ISB to have such a material so that they can keep meeting subjects secret. The second purpose I think is probably more practical, to assist in allowing viewers to understand the size of the space. You see, a perfectly smooth dome interior surface is actually pretty hard to understand the size and scale of while you're inside of it, especially on camera. This probably helped them just convey the size of the space a little bit better for the show. Honestly, there's so much more though I could talk about here. I love the ISB room and the apartment of Mon Mothma and even the very Nakagin capsule tower inspired apartment of Cyril and his mother. But there's all these other spaces that I wish I had more time to talk about, but this video then would probably end up being maybe as much as an hour long. I mean, I love, for example, the brick buildings on Ferrix. It's so rare to see, you know, science fiction shows using real world materials in this way. There's a reason why we use brick to construct buildings. It just makes a lot of sense to create a modular material that can be easily transported and manufactured. There's no reason why we wouldn't see something similar in some distant future or other galaxy if there were humanoids living in it. There's just a sensibility to it that goes beyond a sense of architectural style. But I also think it also helps to, for example, serve a storytelling purpose because Brick is also associated with working class and factories and maybe even frontier life. I mean, there's just so many layers of information that we can peel back from each of these different set locations that tell more about the story than just what we're seeing from the characters. I love this attention to detail and how much the art direction team cares about making this world feel like it exists. So I gotta commend that entire team. I know there's probably one guy at the top really trying to lead things, but in my experience, Art direction and, well, art design and architectural design, these are team efforts where everybody bounces ideas off of one another to come up with the best solution. And if these guys can continue doing what they're doing here for the Andor set with the rest of the series and maybe even going into stuff like The Mandalorian, I think we're in for a real treat. But what do you guys think? Did you guys like these locations like I did? Did you see something that I didn't? Or maybe you know some of the locations that I wasn't able to point out. Which of these spaces are your favorite, especially considering I didn't do all of them? Tell me about one location maybe that I didn't cover that you'd like to see me talk about. Whatever your thoughts are though, I want to see them down below. Guys, I've been Morphologist. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.